I'd like to um, go ahead and invite Jay Crossley to um, take away my screen here uh, to speak with us about Vision Zero and um, and the work that you're doing in, in Texas. And so we've got a few questions for you, but first, Jay, just want to welcome you. And if you could go ahead and just introduce yourself um, and tell us about the work you do related to transportation. Hi, everybody. Uh, can you hear me fine? Yes. Yes. Um, so my name is Jay Blazett Crossley. I, um, I'm executive director of a nonprofit called Farm and City. And our biggest program is Vision Zero Texas, um, leading the advocacy and community efforts supporting this movement statewide. Um, I, I grew up in Houston in Montrose, went to Lamar High School, um, and then um, went to UT twice um, and was in Austin for 10 years. Uh, and then after graduate school, went moved back to Houston and worked for an organization called Houston Tomorrow for 10 years. And we did a lot of work there on transit, but uh, it, over time, more and more work on uh, Vision Zero for Houston for, for a while now. Um, and very briefly, Farm and City is a, is a 501c3 nonprofit. Uh, we work to um, basically improve the quality of life for all Texans. Um, looking at transportation, urban planning, sustainability, and equity issues. So uh, not only do we work on Vision Zero, but also um, trying to improve access to transit, transit funding, uh, improve equity in our transportation decision-making systems, uh, and move towards more sustainable regional growth models. Um, and so I'm very excited to be here and talk to all y'all uh, about what we can do to make Houston safer for everybody. Thanks, Jay. Um, so what's the first thing that you think of when I say safe streets? You know, I, I, I have a somewhat uh, young father. I have a six year old son and, and it really it, it, I think about kids uh, having freedom and having fun. And like I think about when I grew up in Montrose in the 80s. Um, and when I, by the time I was in middle school, I had my little gang of friends would skateboard around Montrose by ourselves. And at that time, I think it was really somewhat different and, uh, the streets were somewhat safer. Um, and the, but that, uh, sense of freedom for children uh, and really for everyone, for, for people of all ages, we want, uh, seniors to feel safe, to walk and access things in their neighborhood. Uh, and everybody in between. And so um, a lot of, for me, what Safe Streets is about is, 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 is giving us, all of us, access to freely move about and get to where we want to go and talk to people and see people and go to the coffee shop and things like that. Uh, I do have to say that I also think about um, the, the families that suffer. And um, this is a, a, an ongoing tragedy um, and, and people really suffer. Uh, hard from this and so I, I for them I want us to fix this and I work with a lot of families who have been through trauma and are trying to change this so others don't have to suffer like they do. Thank you um, for saying that so in saying that if you know Vision Zero ends roadway deaths and serious injuries in Houston what are the other benefits in addition to safety? Yeah, and so um, I mean, a big one is obesity, and like you know, we have a huge obesity crisis in Texas and in Houston, and part of it is that parents are scared to let their kids walk around the neighborhood, and and so generations of Houstonians basically not having active lifestyles uh, and and not feeling free to ride a bike or to or to walk to school, um, and that has serious impacts, like not allowing people the option to have active transportation as a daily part of life uh, really impacts our health. Um, uh, also, you know, it's, it's the limiting factor. We always talk about, you know, we, we have too much congestion and too many cars and people have to drive too much. And I think a real reason people in Houston don't walk or bike uh, is because they don't feel safe. 
And so um, uh, the lack of safety actually might cause some of our congestion and cause some of our, our other problems. Um, and finally, it, there's a huge budget impact of lack of safety. Um, and the, the cost to the people of Houston of crashes is much higher than the cost of congestion. Um, and we've been, you know, in recent times, been thinking about the role of police and a huge element of the city of Houston police department budget is responding to traffic crashes. Um, and so we're spending a huge amount of money and resources dealing with the, these uh, not having a safe system. Yeah, those all of those components, um, sometimes we often don't think about when it when we think about traffic safety. So I'm glad that you brought that that forward. I'm going to ask one more question, then I want to open it up to um, other folks who have questions. Um, uh, so what are some of the best approaches to safe streets across the state or the country and what uh, can Houston learn from them? Um, well, I'm very excited about progress happening across the nation on speed and really rethinking um, how we think about speed. And for a long time, we've tried to, there's been an empty promise that you're going to get home faster. And that really hasn't worked, uh, it, but it's also been very dangerous. Uh, and so across the nation, cities and states are changing the way we design our streets for speed. Uh, and so New York City has been a leader in this and, and actually changing the streets to make them uh, designed so you feel comfortable driving at a safe speed and that um, everyone can use the street safely. Um, and then Seattle has, has been a leader on this and basically completely changed their speed limits on every street. Um, but it isn't just happening in these the coast. Um, the city of Austin actually, what day is it? In two days. <laughs> Uh, the Austin City Council will vote on a comprehensive speed management package and and all uh, and they're expected to pass it unanimously. Uh, if they do, all neighborhood streets in the city of Austin will become 25 mile an hour streets and many larger streets will be changed to 30 or 35. And they're going to go change the streets to make it to make you feel comfortable driving at a safe speed. And that's the real problem is if you drive on outer Westheimer and try to drive 30, you are going to feel weird. <laughs> and and that so we need to actually redesign all our streets so you feel OK driving at a speed where you won't you're less likely to kill someone. Uh, so I think that arena is, is exciting. And a, a key part of that is that investing and in fixing our streets for speed can be done across the city and can impact every neighborhood and, and help all of us. Uh, and so I think that's an exciting front. Great. Yeah. Um, I think it's there's oftentimes it's easy to look at other cities and try and figure out best practices and even in Austin. And it may look a little different here in Houston, but definitely um, it's great to be part of the a network of other cities who are doing awesome work on on um, street safety, especially as it relates to speed. Yeah. Uh, so I want to go ahead and um, I'll ask uh, Melissa Beeler, who's on our staff, if there are uh, questions or comments happening in the chat, either about Vision Zero for Jay or both. Uh, there's a lot of comments. I am probably having some side conversations. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'd like to ask follow up questions and, you know, getting people's ideas of what's going on. Um, there was a question of what is the speed limit in residential, which is a good thing for everybody yeah. to know. Yeah, so the um, the default speed limit in Texas um, on surface streets is 30 miles an hour. And so if there isn't a sign saying otherwise, it's 30 miles an hour. Uh, and so most residential streets in Houston, the speed limit is 30. Um, there are some streets where the city has chosen to put in 25 mile an hour street speed signs. Um, and, uh, but the default is 30. Um, we actually, we work at the state legislative level. And so we have, we, we have a bill we've tried to get passed at the legislature, 
um, to change that and to, to make the default statewide in the, to 25 and then to allow cities to do 20. Um, we will be trying that again next year and we'll see. Hi, Lauren, this is Sharon. I have a question for Jay, if I can jump in here. Of course. Now, Jay, there was a question that was actually put onto the chat that you addressed in the chat yeah. box, but I wanted to see if you could address it uh, in speaking so others could hear it. And the question was, Bike Houston and Lee Houston have already identified high-risk intersections. Will this data be aggreg uh, aggregated with all of the information that we're putting into Vision Zero? Yeah, and so I was just responding that I my understanding is that the city that one that was over a year ago and there was a study that focused only on um, high risk intersections for pedestrians and people riding bikes, which was a very important study and helped move forward some projects to actually fix some of those intersections. Um, but now the city's vision zero program, I think, has done a sort of much broader and more robust and good map um, looking at the entire city. Uh, and identifying the highest risk areas for everybody. Uh, and so whether you're walking or biking or driving places that there's the most risk. And, and I think that's very hopeful because a big part of Vision Zero is having better information so we don't waste public funds. And so when the city has a million dollars or a hundred million dollars to spend on fixing streets, now the Vision Zero program can provide a map showing you here's where you get the most bang for your buck and the the, the most people will be basically have safer uh access to that intersection um and and just i i'm fairly sure link houston and bike houston contributed significantly to the new maps so uh, i think it's it's a nice evolution of that process thank you does anybody um uh, who may be dialing in want to ask a question or um, uh, have any comments that they'd like to share. This is a time for open discussion, so we want to hear from you all um, what you're thinking. And a, a reminder to press star six uh, to unmute yourself if you are dialing in. I I noticed that some people are talking about 25 mile an hour or 30 in the chat. Um, and I will say that what Austin, Austin was doing was doing So what what Austin's doing on Thursday, the city of Houston, in my understanding, could also do. Um, and so uh, I certainly will help you all check out um, Part of what the city of Austin did is spent a lot of time studying the law and <laughs> figuring out how to do it correctly. Um, and so uh, uh, that you're studying it, you can <laughs> just cheat and take it from Austin if you wanted to make all streets, all neighborhood streets in Houston 25 miles an hour. Laura, we also have another question in the chat that I wanted sure. to bring back to Jay. And this one says, how does the telecom industry contribute to this vision, the smart car? So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Um, so I always say, if, that, sorry, I can't talk. So I always say that if you're not taking sort of automated um, cars and robot cars and connected vehicles seriously, then you're not taking safely seriously. If you are only talking about automate robot cars, you're also not taking safety seriously. So I think we have to um, most likely, you know, broad adoption of robots is and the city should can and should should do a lot right now to make people's lives safer. Um, however, we should be moving quickly with technology that can make us safer. Um, and so, yeah, there's a lot of kind of telecom ITS uh, in, in intelligent transportation systems or ITS investments that Texas cities have made and can make. Um, uh, there's a bunch of the intersections in Austin have these all kinds of robots trying to figure out who's coming through at what speed. Um, 
And uh, I think that's a crucial element of all this um, as we go forward. Right. There is uh, one example. One of the things we lost because the Texas legislature outlawed red light cameras, aside from the basic safety benefits, is that in Austin, their red light camera system could actually tell if they were um, and about to run a red light and the system would actually hold the other light red if it could tell someone's about to run through a red light. And so the system was actually preventing crashes. <laughs> um, and, but since that was outlawed, that's gone, I think, my understanding. But we could figure out those kind of things to use technology to actually save lives. There's another question in the chat really quick um, regarding funding. Um, thinking and after Madamba also mentioned where is the funding coming from for all these proposals discussed? Will this result in tax increases for residents in Houston? Are private developers who are often seeking variances from planning commission, um, will they contribute? Basically? Yeah. Um, I, I think the way I'll explain that is that really the, the text dot and the Texas Transportation Commission uh, um, has adopted a road to zero, um, pretty much vision zero, but they called it something different, and decided to increase safety funding by $300 million a year last year, um, essentially moving some discretionary money they had from another pot to safety. And uh, But there's something that they always say, um, and that, that the city of Austin always said. The city of Austin also has dedicated vision zero funding. Uh, they've uh, done $20 million in, in bonds for Vision Zero um, twice in the last four years. However, um, TxDOT and the City of Austin say that every transportation project, every dollar spent on transportation should be Vision Zero dollars. And everything we do, every time we rebuild a road, every time we build a sidewalk, we should make it as safe as possible and we should be improving safety for all. Uh, and so I believe uh, quite a lot of money on streets <laughs> and quite a lot of money on transportation and our the Houston region spends a huge amount of money on transportation and so um, re somewhat being smarter about how we spend our existing money can achieve a lot of what we're trying to do although I do believe the city of Houston needs some amount of dedicated targeted safety money um, to 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 enhance safety uh, it's crucial there's some amount of Vision Zero money, which doesn't quite exist at this point uh, in Houston. Great, and this is Sharon again. Jay, we have a question in the queue from Greg. He wants to know if Vision Zero includes some form of re-education for drivers. Seems like there should be something maybe to coincide with license renewal possibly. Right, right, uh, and yes, and the, um, there's lots of evidence all kinds of more effective if you can educate people while you're changing the street. So if you, uh, so City of Austin's doing its speed management changes, they're going to change signs everywhere and they're going to change designs, but they're going to do a huge education campaign until they do that. Um, uh, there are a lot of attempts. Uh, you know, if you get a ticket and you have to do driver safety education, um, across Texas, people have been trying to add, um, education about sort of uh, laws about how to be safe around pedestrians and things like that to driver safety education. So I think there's huge room for improvement there. Um, uh, but we we have to, it, we, ha we have had, I grew up in Houston and I grew up as, a, as a, everybody else as part of a culture of just being wildly dangerous and driving too fast. And, um, and you know, I was once a 15 year old boy driving in Houston. I guess uh, we have to change that culture 